Lisa. And I'm Susie, and we host The Coaching Cast, the no-nonsense podcast chatting about the things impacting you at work right now, helping you to survive and thrive in today's workplace. Welcome to this special bonus episode, a behind-the-scenes glimpse into our worlds, where you will get to know us both a little bit better. Intrigued? Well, you should be. Right, so Lisa, in this bonus episode, the limelight, the focus is on you. So let's get into it. Um, so firstly, for our listeners, our CBBs, um, Lisa, what is your story? So what brought you to now co-hosting the coaching cast with me? Wow, this real significant life moment of the honour of being <laughs> your your podcast partner extraordinaire, as we refer to ourselves. Indeed. So, so I had decided to transition industries and move from the thrilling, exciting world of energy in utilities to a different kind of energy, Lucasade, soft drinks. And so that was around, I made that move in 2017. And I, at that point, when I joined LucasAid, I joined the logistics team and was, I remember hosting an event at our logistical partners offices just outside of Cheltenham. Yeah. And I was hosting an event for a sales team at LucasAid who had chosen to um, have a team day at those offices and change up the location and get better connected to another part of the business that they work closely with and in that team was you and you came along with your whole sales function and that's where you and I very first met so we forged our friendship at <laughs> Lucas Aid and I remember talking about myself to you and your team and sharing that I was a qualified coach and really passionate about coaching and use it, used it in my leadership style and talking in general about my passion for people and, and personal development. And I remember you contacting me afterwards and saying, really loved you talking about people development and coaching. It's actually something I'm really interested in. And I've just started the um, a course at the University of Salford to get my own coaching qualification and that's when you and I started to share our love of all things but a lot to do with coaching yeah and then an opportunity came up to actually join your part of the business and become part of your team which I took and then you and I very much worked very closely together we did um at Lucas Aid and I yeah me developing a on trade field sales team Sounds totally bizarre now. But yes, that is what I did, listeners, uh, with Susie's heavy guidance and direction <laughs> um, <laughs> and attempted to sell a spirit mixer into the market. Now, I did have a, some weird sort of tenuous link because my husband was um, running his pub at the time. So I did have this personal connection to the on trade, as well as generally being a lover of going out, socialising and alcohol. Uh, but it was an incredible experience, something I've never tried before. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I left LucasAid at the end of 2019 to establish my own coaching business, which I'm still doing today. So my coaching business is called Grip Coaching Limited. And Susie and I stayed really close. And in 2020, when Susie had, was on her maternity leave, um, said, I want to meet up with you in Cheltenham and have a chat um, about this idea I've got and I was and you're like, like oh, yeah. I was like this sounds, sounds ominous cool. <laughs> it sounds cool and uh, we had um I think we had lunch did we have lunch at the 131 we One did yeah places in Cheltenham uh other restaurants are available um you said I've got this idea I want to launch a podcast I've got a name for it which I've already trademarked I was like wow super organized <laughs> Susie uh what do you think and I was like yeah I'm game let's do it and the coaching cast was born there we go and here we are three years later and we're still producing the podcast I'm still coaching uh, and growing my business grip and yeah still have the pleasure of spending lots of time with you 
<laughs> we're still having fun. We're still, still having talking. Fun. Yeah, we're still talking. Love of co- coaching and people, and we have a few laughs along the way. That's Indeed. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love reflecting on that little story because often I think because we work so closely together, like, and so often we talk. I actually forget a lot of the time, like how we, when people ask me, they're like, how did you meet? And I'm like, um, well, we, we've known each other for a while. So I love that you brought that story back to kind of front of mind for me and the listeners. Amazing. Yeah. Special times. <laughs> they were good times. Good fun times at Lucas Aid. Very fun yeah, times. Definitely. So tell us a little bit more then. You touched upon it there about um, your coaching business, which yeah. is obviously Grip Coaching Limited. So talk to us a little bit more about um, who you support, what you do, uh, and give us a bit of a flavor of your kind of your your daily life in the world of grip coaching. Yeah, of course. So I call myself the middle manager coach. Um, and that's because I do particularly love and work with middle managers. So they're those brilliant group of people that work just below the chief execs and who I think work in the most pressured and conflicted layer in any business where they're literally trying to be something for everyone and deliver success for everyone, but very often not for themselves. So I think it's the role where quite often many of us who are in that situation can feel quite lost because we tend to lose ourselves and what's really important because you know what it's like, the, the exec board are demanding on you and you're kind of having to deliver everything for them and therefore the business and meet their expectations. And sometimes I think as well, like holding them up, like I know my experience has often been that I really prop up the execs and that's how it's felt. And then you've got your peer group that you're supporting. And I mean, if you're fortunate to work in a really brilliant, cohesive, collaborative peer group, i applaud you and say well done but many of us have worked in quite toxic environments I know I have which are highly competitive and then you're also trying to be someone to all of those people you lead so your direct reports but also potentially their direct reports and those people who are quite junior in the organization and I think you know that is a lot of people a lot of relationships and dynamics to juggle and a lot of pressure as I said a lot of stress And I think very often it's you that gets forgotten. It's not very often that people go, well, how are you? What do you need? What support do you require? And sometimes I think the expectation is, well, you've been this successful so far, so you can just keep doing more of that. And you've got this, you you don't need help and you need to just get on with it essentially. Um, And I just don't think that's fair or true. I know my experience very much was that I struggled in that space and I felt ashamed that I felt that way. When actually there was no shame in asking for help and just saying, I just need a bit of support here. Like you're everyone's always growing and learning. It doesn't matter what level yeah. you're at and everyone benefits from support. So I really am passionate about continuing to support that group and enable them to embrace their roles with energy and enthusiasm and enjoyment more than anything else connect with their confidence and their capabilities because I think when you've got that strong connection to yourself it gives you a fantastic foundation to build connections with others and in a leadership role it's all about relationships in my opinion and I think and then really take control of your personal development and your growth so that you ensure that you thrive and you don't get caught in what I call the crap trap because I just don't think being manager should be shit, but I think too often it is for many people. So yeah. I'm all I'm all I'm all for making sure that we just shovel that shit out of the way and make everything yeah. much more pleasurable when it becomes to comes to being a manager. Absolutely. So if some of our CVs are listening to this now and they think, oh, that's me, I definitely could do with a bit of help in this space. How can they get in contact with you? So you can get in contact with me through LinkedIn. LinkedIn's probably my favorite platform and simply just search me. So Lisa Robin Wood, you will find me. And I have a link on my profile where you can just book in a 30 minute chat for free. I'm always up for having a conversation. So please, if you're interested in coaching or you think it will be, whether that be for you or you think it will benefit your, your team or your business, because I do team coaching as well, then just book some time in. Let's have a conversation. Um, you can also find me on my website, which is gripcoaching.co.uk. 
and there's lots of information there lots more lots more of my ramblings as there is on like linkedin um so yeah so as i said one-to-one -one coaching team coaching i can have a conversation about both as well as training as well because i'm very passionate about training too and helping others to learn the the skills around self-management and team management and communication amazing fantastic okay so that's you at work but let's now look at Lisa outside of work. So what are some of your interests, hobbies, things you enjoy outside of running your own business? So when I'm not working on the business, I'm probably, I am quite guilty, I think, of someone who is probably always thinking about the business and looking at opportunities to continue my learning. So as a podcaster, I don't just enjoy podcasting. I love listening to podcasts. So for anyone who regularly listens to the coaching cast, you'll know that I absolutely am obsessed with Elizabeth Day. And I love her podcast, How to Fail. I was listening to it earlier, actually, on my walk. Um, so I particularly enjoy her podcast and all her literature as well, because I do love to read. Um, I also love Annie McManus. Man I can't speak. Annie McManus's Changes podcast. Annie Mac. I should just call it Annie Mac um and I think I like that genre of podcast where you really get to learn from other people yeah um I think anything that I find informative I quite enjoy so I love listening to podcasts um I'm an avid park runner I park run whenever I can on a Saturday morning um and for me that feels like a mood boost as well as an exercise boost because there's nothing like going to park run you feel like you cheered on every Saturday to run a marathon it's not it's 5k but it feels like a marathon and I really enjoy doing that and spending time with friends and family and socializing they're big things but I would say that's probably it hobbies wise it's funny isn't it I was like what are my hobbies it feels like such an old school thing to ask now hobbies because I'm like <laughs> I don't crochet I don't what do you mean you don't crochet I don't decoupage you know wow. the art of you know decoupage is like the layering of paper isn't it I don't do anything like that don't make things with paper mache oh I tell you what I could say a hobby is and we were just talking about this my side hustle, Vinted, totally obsessed with it. Oh, yeah, more of, a, more of a seller than a buyer. Um, I love selling on Vinted. I find it really yeah. satisfying. I like the cleansing experience of ridding myself of things I no longer need or want and other people enjoying those items while giving me money that I can buy on other things. But, <laughs> yeah, Vinted well, is like my new side hustle. You got me into Vinted as well. We both oh God, are so good. big um yeah. yeah big advocates of vintage for sure if you yeah. haven't heard of it go and check it out it's amazing yeah. pre-loved yeah all so over I, it. I would say yeah listening to podcasts <laughs> watching movies and series I'm finally catching up with all of the handmaid's tale because I couldn't watch it in South Africa because it's not available there um and it's so bloody good um can't wait to watch the new series of sex education that's just come out okay um yeah spending time with friends and family and you failed to mention vintage. that you also spend a decent proportion of the year in South Africa. Yes, I do. And no, I, I haven't mentioned it. I'm fortunate um, and very privileged to have a house in Cape Town. So I spend a lot of time there. Um, and my husband absolutely loves South Africa. So we're we're looking to launch a business there soon, hopefully. So that's very exciting. But yeah, that's home away from home. So absolutely, absolutely adore South Africa and Cape Town. I'm very lucky to be able to enjoy it. Yeah, so if you listen to any of our episodes, you'll hear kind of Lisa's South African kind of stories, experiences, uh, musings maybe, <laughs> peppered throughout many of those episodes uh, where, the, where the weather is glorious and I'm sat in the, the dark winters months of the UK. <laughs> Not that I'm envious at all. Um, okay, so then, right, you asked me this question, so I'm yeah. going to ask you the same thing, right? We obviously have a part of our episode called Bullshit Bingo, which is one of our most popular features on the episodes. Um, so what is your most favourite bullshit bingo bin so far and why? I think my favourite has got to be capturing hearts and minds. <laughs> yes, because it really is, for me, the epitome of bullshit. And it does link to a, of an organization I worked for in a time when it was getting thrown around and the irony of it was is that there was nothing in the practice of what we were doing as a business at the time that was ever going to capture anyone's heart or mind <laughs> um but I just absolutely love it so it's much. a classic 
And I just think it sounds like such a load of guff. So yeah. <laughs> I oh, think that's my favourite. I really wanted to put it on a T-shirt. You know, when we were getting into like, oh, we should make some merch for the... I really wanted that as a T-shirt, capturing hearts and minds. Um, maybe, I, well, I'd like to hope that that's what we're doing here at the coaching cast, that we're capturing every listener's heart and mind. But um, <laughs> it is just such a shit. I just love it so much as a phrase. So yeah, that's definitely my favourite, I think. Amazing. So... Um, from that then, b- kind of bullshit bingo, calling out those phrases which make us cringe. Um, we've created a community around our podcast called the Corporate Bullshit Bashers because actually we don't like any of that nonsense. We're just about plain, straight talking uh, and understanding kind of where we're at. Uh, and we want to make sure that you can become part of our CB community. We invite you in. So if you'd like to be part of the CB community and listen to episodes of the coaching cast search for the coaching cast wherever you get your podcasts and on youtube and on our website thecoachingcast.co.uk